Hi, it's Jesse Connor from Hutchinson Farm Supply. Today we are going to do a product showcase on the Still MS-170 Chainsaw. If you follow our Facebook page, you may remember that we already did a video on the MS-170, but that was one of the first videos we did, and since then we bumped up our production quality a bit, and there was a few things we missed in the video. So the MS-170 is an entry-level chainsaw from Still. Uh, this is the bottom of the stack, but uh, a lot of the concepts apply to later models, and this video is sort of geared towards people who aren't very familiar with chainsaws and may not know bars, chains, stuff like that. So we're gonna go over the basics, and if you have any questions, by all means, let us know. Every unit that we sell gets a full PBI, so the product will come ready to go, out of the box, fueled up, and we'll go over all the safety information and usage techniques with you. So this kind of just shows the setup process, uh, and it'll go over things like if in the future if you want to change your bar or chain or anything like that, this will help you out with that. With that being said, let's take a look at how the unit is assembled. There are a couple key parts of a chainsaw to know about. So you got your main body here, so this is with the engine and everything exciting. And then there is the bar and the chain. These will vary from chainsaw to chainsaw, but with the MS-170 there's one bar it comes with and one chain it comes with. Also in the box are important things like the instruction manual. There's all sorts of safety information in here. It even tells you how to cut down a tree, which is kind of outside the scope of this video, but lots of important stuff. Uh, it comes with a little tool to make the whole tensioning and assembly process a little easier. These units come already assembled when you buy them from our store. They've already received a full PDI. This is just so you can kind of get more of a feel for the machine. You don't have to assemble the chainsaw yourself. On the side here, You'll see a couple um, nuts, so we're just going to spin these things off, and this is going to reveal what is called the sprocket. So here we have the sprocket, and this is going to tension the chain. Everything is going to make a little more sense when I start to put together. It's a little hard to visualize at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the uh, chain tensioner here and we're going to loosen it all the way up. It's already most of the way there but this is just going to make it easier for us to get the uh, chain on. Mm, that looks like it's pretty close down there. We're going to pop open our bar. So as with chain there's lots of different shapes and sizes of these things but this unit only has one that we need to worry about. It's a self-oiling bar so that means that once the unit is filled up with the chain oil, it will spread it through the grooves in the bar to make sure that there's not too much friction when you're cutting and you'll burn out your bar if it's not there. This is the chain. So the chain will vary depending on the bar, but for this model, there's only the one chain like to worry about. So as you can see, this one's a little tangled, which is a fairly common thing. So we've got our chain untangled. We're going to make sure that the cutting part is facing forward. So with the still logo up, the cutting edge should be forward. And if it can fit over the nose just nicely, you can see we've got a nice fit there. Like it shouldn't be tight at all when you're putting the chain in. So now what we're going to do is we are going to place these. It's going to go over the chain tensioner with those uh, not, uh, with those bolts in the middle going on. So here we go. So right now, it's still a little loose. What we can do, we'll throw this guard cover back on to hold it in place. We're going to put these nuts on. We're not going to tighten them all the way up just yet because we need to get uh, the chain properly tightened because as you can see right now it's way too loose. So on most still models the chain tensioner is right here however on the MS-170 it is actually on the other side of the chain just underneath. Once you have it tight enough you should still have a little bit of spring in here especially like you should have enough that springs if you, when you push up on the nose. Uh, so now that we have it more or less the correct tension we're going to go finish tightening these off all the way. And at this point, the saw is more or less assembled. So an important thing to know about 
uh, chainsaws is they have a chain brake. So this is a brake that stops the chain from moving. Now that we've got our unit all put together, let's take a look at some safety tips. The first step to safety is going to be your personal protective equipment. Fortunately, still sells the woodcutter safety kit. This includes most of what you need to become a skilled woodsman or person. So just going through the box, these are chaps. So these go over your legs and what they do is that they tangle up the chain in the process and make it so the chain stops before it cuts your leg off. Very beneficial. Head protection is also very important, not because the chainsaw is going to fall on your head, but because a tree or whatever you're cutting down might. This unit in particular includes ear protection with the head protection, as chainsaws can be loud, trees falling down can be loud, very important to protect your hearing as well. It also includes a face protector of sorts that will stop any big chunks of wood from getting into your face, cutting it. You are still going to need to protect your eyes with that, which is why it also includes a nice pair of safety glasses. Uh, these ones are black. We have lots of other options here as well. Some other personal protective equipment that you might be interested in when uh, cutting down your trees is special footwear so that if the tree falls on your foot, it's okay. And make sure you always have good footing. You don't slip and just use a chainsaw and work gloves, of course. So work gloves will help you keep good control of the chainsaw, also keep you warm, any cuts, slivers, very important. This is by no means a complete list of all the things you need to be con concerned about safety-wise. You always need to read and follow the manual. Uh, this is just kind of a very brief overview of some of the simpler stuff. Always ask if you have questions and always read the manual. So still chainsaws are designed for right-hand use. You can see with my hand over here, I have control over the control lever. So I can stop it immediately if I have to. Being for right-handed use, you can also see that the blade comes down at the side of you when you're using it with your right hand. If I were to be using it with my left, it would come in the middle of me. That's not good. Of course, once you're aware of your safety, you're probably waiting to start this up. So let's get some fuel into it. As with most small power equipment, still chainsaws use mixed fuel. So I'm going to do a separate video on fuel mixing and basic fuel requirements. But for now, we're just going to use still moto mix, which is pre-mixed fuel. This is already gas and oil mix 50 to 1. We're also going to need bar oil. So bar oil keeps the chain lubricated and reduces the friction. Still bars are self-oiling. So all we need to do is pour this in this first one here that has a picture of chain and oil or channel. Makes sense. Premix fuel is going to go in here. It even says it's got a picture of a gas can and oil on there. Very straightforward. With the unit all fueled up, we're ready to get it started. Make sure that you always read the manual to learn the safe starting procedures. Uh, we're not really going to go over that here, but it's very important. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the procedure itself, just because some people get caught up on that. So the first step is always to make sure that your chain brake is on. You want the gar scabbard off of the saw, or otherwise you're going to make a big plasticky mess. So on the back here, we have what's called the ignition interlock. So you need to go like that. So as you can see, it does not slide all the way down unless you have both hands on here. So with that unfold choke, you're going to pull it until you hear a sputter. So this is a false start. That just means that it is ready to go and be started on your partial choke. So as soon as that happens, slide one up and pull and it will start either on the first pull or within the first three at that point. As soon as the engine starts running, it'll rev up like crazy. The chain will not move because your chain breaks on. As soon as it starts, you need to hit the trigger and just flip the throttle so that the engine is not continuing to run. Otherwise, you will burn through this part right here, and that will not be a very pleasant experience. At this point, you're all ready to get started on your career as a lumberjack. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and look forward to any comments or suggestions you might have. If you have any questions, just please let us know. As always, please like, comment, or subscribe, and let us know what you want to see in future videos. Have a great day, and hope to see you soon. Bye.